Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater channel. All right, today I have a cool new product here. It is a portable projector and it has a lot of cool features on it. It actually is a new product. Uh, it went through a Kickstarter campaign, very successful, but I'll open it up. I will test it out. I'll put it projecting probably right here on the wall behind me um, and we will see how good it is. You know, there's a couple key features I'll mention right now before we get into it. And one is that they claim it's the brightest portable projector out there on the market which is you know 500 ANSI lumen so ANSI is a um, American standard um, test that you know suppose you can't cheat on I can't support that I can't verify uh, how br how bright it is but we will certainly look at it uh, with the lights off with the lights on and I'll give you my opinion on how usable it is from a brightness standpoint the other thing that it has is Android TV is the operating system so that's a really good thing to me because I like uh, I, had, I do have an Android TV I don't use it that much actually it's down here um, in one of these basement rooms but it's very intuitive it obviously has a lot of support from from Google it supports Chromecast it has uh, something I think called iMirror uh, for uh, Apple uh, AirPlay to, to share I don't have Apple products but if you did you can also screen share with that as well and uh, then it also supports you know regular type of input but the cool thing is that it's a standalone unit so it has speakers built in they're five watts each so that's 10 watts of sound output and like I said it has a built-in Android operating system so that has apps and stuff that you can uh, have uh, content uh, saved on the device itself to use and then it uh, also has a handle you know for easy carrying in a case and then it also has uh, automatic uh, autofocus and then adjustable keystone so keystone is when you are projecting like if I project it from over here at an angle over to here then you your screen your projector screen will be all you know cattywampus is the word that uh, I think best describes it but it'll look more like a, a rhombus or something not a rectangle and so this allows you to correct for that a lot of are some of these portable ones don't have some of those features so it's kind of cool that it has all that stuff built in uh, so let's open it up and um, see what it looks like and then we'll test it out. Alright, so this is kind of a nice little case that comes in with a handle. And it weighs about 5 pounds for the device itself. So with the, the whole case with the power brick, it's, it's a little bit more than that. Alright, uh, so here we got some instruction manuals. We have some stickers and a warranty card. It says... Um, two-year warranty um, is included for free on this guy so let's pull out this is the handle here's the cube itself so you know this is a aluminum um, case here the front and the back are plastic but the main unit is aluminum and it looks uh, very sturdy and um, and clean and then on the bottom of it it has a standard camera tripod mount so you know this is something that you can use uh, any tripod the tripod that camera's on right now uh, this could screw into and I even have a little desktop one that um, you know will make aiming it even easier there are no adjustable legs so maybe that's one downside to it but you know you can always just stick something underneath it if you got to point it up at an angle and then you can adjust the keystone to get it just right so on the back side, it has the power cord. Now it doesn't have a battery, so you would need to have a, a source of power. Now you could run it off a, uh, a battery source, I'm sure. Let's see if I can check out the input here. So it takes 19 volts at up to 6.3 amps. So you know that is um, you know. A lot of a lot of power what else it has besides that uh, power is a USB a port and that can be used with Android TV you can actually plug in like a, a keyboard if you wanted to so you know because it, it has a remote in here that you can use to select things and it even has voice uh, on there as well but if you had to type something you can plug in a keyboard uh, to that and it has infrared sensor HDMI port and USB-C um, port and then last but is a headphone port in there so uh, the other point with the USB 
uh, port is that you can attach a storage device to them like a, a USB uh, flash drive or a um, you know, SD card reader that could go in there. It does have internal storage. I think it's about 16 gigabytes of storage. And the operating system and everything uses about six of that. So you think you're left over with about 10 gigs of usable storage uh, for content to be saved directly to it. And then uh, that's about it with the actual unit. Obviously, this, um, this handle goes on here. We'll put that on in a second. Here's the remote. It has volume up, down, and then it's the directional menu controls like most um, of these Android TVs, Roku TVs, where you scroll up and down and then OK button on there. It also has a button for a little speaker, and that puts this into just uh, Bluetooth speaker mode where the projector is not on but you can use it as a speaker system for your phone uh, through Bluetooth. All right, and then we have power cable. So this is a uh, AC adapter, you know, to get you out uh, to the uh, 19 volts that it wants. And that's all there is to it, to this, um, to this case. It is nice, uh, handy case here, though. All right, so I got the batteries in this guy. I have this guy plugged in to power, and I have it propped up here just on a, a little coaster to to get the height up and let me turn off at least my my big light uh, behind the camera I'll play with these um, recess lights obviously I think it's not going to work very well with the lights blasting around top of it but I'll show you a comparison of of that okay so to start we'll just turn this guy on And we'll see what it does. So now I already turned it on and I set up the um, Android TV to my Google account. So that I already did so that it's logged in and I can, um, you know, use all my same apps that I have on my other Android TV. All right, so you can see the first thing it did was autofocus. That was a setting I have. I'm going to move it a little bit to the right here. Uh, and you can see when you move it, it automatically refocuses itself where it looks good. Now with these lights on, obviously it's a little bit washed out. It's definitely still watchable, but uh, it's something where you want less light. So let's go ahead and kick off these lights right now. Okay, Google, turn off basement far. All right, there we go. That one looks a lot better now. That is a crisp, clean image. And I'm not exactly sure what size it is. Let's see here. Roughly, you know, it's about six feet diagonal image there. So 72 inches, give or take, is about where it's at. And, um, you know, here, if you haven't seen Android TV, this is what Android TV looks like. Uh, before we go into uh, playing a video, let me go up here real fast to the settings. And we'll see here um, these general settings. So obviously you have your internet connection, your Bluetooth and remotes where, you know, this uh, remote here um, is paired with that unit uh, via Bluetooth for sound. So this remote actually has um, a Google Assistant built into it so you can use that to command things. Mouse mode, you know, I clicked on it. It turns the, instead of being the directional up-down selection, it turns it into a mouse, but you still have to use the arrows to move it around, so the mouse mode doesn't really seem that useful to me. Input source, this is where you could just go in there and select a different input source, like HDMI. Language, obviously, is, is language. For projection method, you know, this is where, this is a desktop front projection, which means the projector is facing the same way that you are if you had it on the back side of a screen then that would be a rear projection so you can set it up when you do that and that basically just mirror images the uh, the screen then you could do ceiling which mean the unit is upside down and then you could do ceiling rear so upside down and mirrored image those are the options that you can do for this automatic autofocus is uh, what I have set up. That's where you saw the white uh, screen with the grids where it auto focuses whenever you turn it on or move it. Vertical keystone, this is where you can adjust that rhombus shape I was talking about, you know, depending on how high 
it is um, is pointed. Then the four point keystone, you know, if you've never messed with these before, this is where you adjust that screen so you know when you first, if, you, if you're at an angle or something, your screen might be something like this, all cattywampus, and uh, you need to adjust that. So this is a quick way you come in here, and you just manually adjust it until it looks about uh, right. Okay, electronic zoom. So, you know, they recommend you put it about 6 to 10 feet away from the screen. You can put it uh, closer than that, but it needs to be, um, you know, roughly 6 to 10 is the best uh, spot. Right now, I have it a little bit under 7 feet away. So, you know, it, it gives it, you know, it's kind of a close to a 1 to 1 ratio at least I think uh, how far away it is versus your diagonal screen distance. So this is the zoom feature and you can basically zoom in and zoom out on there to change your size if you need to. Aspect ratio obviously you can pick 16 by 9 or 4 by 3. Sound, this is just the same thing the um, remote itself has a sound up and down button so I'm not sure why you need it here. That's just a volume really. Date and time, storage, uh, firmware update and then device preferences is really just the Google device preferences for things like privacy and data sharing. All right, so let's get in here to um, something to just give you some um, something to watch here. All right, so let's go into my uh, channel here. Here's a couple of my more recent ones. Let me just go in here and play one of my recent T-Mobile home videos that I have out there and in general it will work um, you know if you do that most of the time time uh, the internet will come back on and, and work um, but okay so the volume just to give you a test of it let me those. go ahead and raise it all at full One blast so you can hear it IP addresses all of the T-Mobile ones use a 192.168.12.1 as their gateway address and then they enumerate up from there so a point two. Okay so the sound is definitely plenty loud enough to hear and it doesn't really get that distorted even at the high end so it is a usable device even setting up for a backyard video uh, you know projecting even on the side of your house this has enough sound volume to uh, to hear it for sure especially since you'll probably be fairly close to it now it does have a fan on it and that fan is going right now you can hear that fan when there is no other sound coming out of there but when the volume is up so you're watching a movie or TV show you can't even notice uh, the cooling fan that's on there you can see the image quality is very crisp and very clear I did no manual focus this is all uh, automatic there and um, you know this is obviously a 4k stream that's coming into it it is projecting it out there at a 1080p uh, resolution it does support HDR uh, 10 and so that helps with the lighting contrast between the dark areas and uh, bright areas and overall I would say this um, screen image is more than reasonable um, it's very watchable it's kinda cool how uh, portable it is and you can set it up and in like a minute, it's ready to go uh, playing. Are all connected together as the Asus AI Mesh uh, system. And I'm using that to get coverage. All right, just to show a little action uh, video, let me hop in here to one of these snowplow videos. All right, there we go. You know, this is the little projector. You know, I'm actually really impressed with it. It looks like it's really well made. I really like the Android uh, TV interface. You know, I have a lot of um, uh, 
familiarity with the Google uh, ecosystem and their Android operating system. So it's very familiar to me. It's robust. It always works. And it's fairly simple to navigate. Uh, you know, it's used to a little controller like this. So that's really easy to use. I didn't even have to mess with, um, you know, plugging in a storage device to this. I don't know that I ever would. I would use one of the apps on the built-in operating system or I would uh, screen share from my phone or tablet or other device that would do the Chromecasting. So, you know, that is um, really robust there. It's easy to set up. I've set it up, like I said, at an angle and quickly adjust to that. The, um, the sound is good enough. Now, uh, from a brightness standpoint, you know, obviously in this room with these lights on, it uh, it's usable, I would say, uh, in, in that environment. But for sure, if there's direct sunlight or something on that wall, this is not going to be usable. That's fairly typical of projector, so uh, I don't think there's much to complain there. Uh, so, you know, best use case is in a darker room. And if it's daylight, you might need to close the curtains or something to to get visible um, screen there that doesn't hurt your eyes to look at it. But, um, you know, other than that, I think um, this product has a lot of promise. It was really successful on the Kickstarter um, campaign, and now it's for sale on Amazon and directly th through them. I can get you a discount code. It's just Nader Tater, all lowercase, that you can use on, um, on their site, and um, as well as Amazon, I believe. And that will give you a 10% off of this unit. So that's a little bit of savings for you guys there. Um, now I think really the girls are all, all asleep. But they're going to be excited when I get this out. And I can imagine us having some movie nights. Either in the backyard or down by the pond. This thing's really cool uh, to bring along and do that. So thanks for watching guys. Take care.